in these problems we have some radical expressions that we need to simplify. And the first thing to do is look uh, and see if there's anything under the radical signs that can be simplified. The thing that jumps out at me here right away is the square root of 9. That's just 3. So we can write that like that. 8 times the square root of 2. I don't think I can do much with that right now. Uh, and then we've got 8 times the square root of 8. Well, the square root of 8 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. The square root of 2 times 2 times 2. We can take those 2's out. That becomes a 2 out front. We have to multiply it by the 8 that's already there. So 8 times the square root of 8, when we take this 2 out, becomes 16 times the square root of 2. Now, what we have is something that you should think of as like terms. We have 16 times the square root of 2 and 8 times the square root of 2. Actually, this is a negative 16 times the square root of 2. Those can be added together. So a positive 8 times the square root of 2 minus 16 times the square root of 2 is a negative 8 times the square root of 2. And then we have our minus 3, and that is as simple as we can get it. Let's look at another one. Here we have 4 times the square root of 5, minus 3 times the square root of 5, minus 4 times the square root of 5. If you're looking ahead in this problem, you might see you have a positive 4 times the square root of 5 and a negative 4 times the square root of 5, and they would add up to 0. And what you'd be left with is just a negative 3 times the square root of 5. And you'd be right. That'd be the answer. However, if you were just kind of plowing through this without looking ahead, you might say 4 times the square root of 5 minus 3 times the square root of 5 just leaves 1 square root of 5. And then I subtract 4 more square roots of 5 from that, I would get 1 minus 4, negative 3 times the square root of 5. Either way, you arrive at the same answer. Okay, now we've got a much more complex and hairy looking thing here. First of all, we've got the cube root of 8x. Well, I know the cube root of 8, it's 2, so I can pull that out and that would just be 2 times the cube root of x. Can't do anything else there, I don't think. Now we have 9 times the cube root of x to the fourth, and x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. With a cube root, we're looking at pulling out chunks of 3, so I can pull out 1 and leave 1 behind. So one of the x's comes out here. I get 9 times x times the cube root of x. All right, now I've got minus 4 times the cube root of x. Can't do anything under the radical sign there. And then plus 6x times the cube root of x. So I think we've simplified as much as we can with the radical signs. Now we need to look for like terms. And what we have here are numbers times the cube root of x, these two. And we have numbers times x times the cube root of x. Those are our two sets of like terms. So the two times the cube root of x minus 4 times the cube root of x becomes negative 2 times the cube root of x. And then negative 9x cube root of x plus 6x cube root of x becomes negative 3x cube root of x. And that's our answer. So that's a little bit of work with uh, simplifying radical expressions.